And hello again everyone, and welcome to Darkfall the Journal. My name is Dennis, aka Tan Staffle the Paleo Gamer, and I am your host today. Well, Darkfall the Journal is a point-and-click horror adventure game that originally came out in 2003. Now, this is about a little over 10 years ago. I had um, played it some years ago on CD, and it has recently come out again on Steam and been included in a couple of hum humble bundles and things like that. And so I decided to play through it again, and so here we are. Now, Darkfall starts with a fairly long voiceover that kind of sets things up without really telling you what's going on, but it's the whole introduction to the thing. It tells you why you're there. So we're going to get started on that and let it start doing its thing, and I'll catch up with you later. Message one. If you're there, pick up. It's me, your brother. Oh, I was hoping you were going to be in. I needed you to be in. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking you only have a phone when there's something wrong. Or well, something is wrong. Very wrong. I'm still in Dorset. I'm not the only one here. There's two students from Weymouth University. Polly and Nigel. Ghost hunters, would you believe? Well, I didn't believe. I do now. I need you to leave now. I need you to come here. I would go to the police, but, well, they'd laugh in my face. Ghost hunters. I think whatever they were hunting's found them. I think it's found me too. Please help. And you're always good with things like this. If you leave now, you can catch the late train from Paddington to Weymouth. From Weymouth, get a cab. Come to Dowerton Station, it's abandoned. I'll be waiting. I really need your help on this. The sooner you can get here, the better. This place is really beginning to freak me out. I tried to find Polly or Nigel earlier and I couldn't find them anywhere. They wouldn't just leave. This all started a few days ago. It was when... I can hear it. I can hear it. It's right outside the door. Whispering. It's whispering my name. It knows my name. I've got to open the door. I've got to open the door. Oh good, you're awake. We're in the tunnel, the train tunnel. Just in case you were wondering where we are. Why don't you have a look around? But don't go too far. Not just yet. I have a lot to tell you. And after all that, all the voiceovers have stopped, so we can start talking a little bit here. Um, first of all, the first person we heard was um, Pete Crowhurst. Pete's your brother. And he's apparently gotten himself into some trouble and needs you to help him. Now, he told us to come to Weymouth and then take a cab to Dowerton Station. Why did the cab drop us off in the middle of a train tunnel? How did we get here and how did we fall asleep here? I mean, I know the introductions to these things are just that, introductions, but come on, would it have hurt to let me wake up outside? And the voice that we just heard talking to us, that's someone else. Nah, you can't see me. You'll find out why later. But for now, I can see you, which is all that matters. Yeah, we're being talked to by a ghost. And really, why are we in this tunnel? I mean, the game does kind of a railroad you, uh, pun intended there, at the beginning. No, not that way. That tunnel goes for half a mile, you know. We don't have time. Go the other way. 
And I'll point out I was clicking to try to turn while that voice was talking. And while he's talking, you can't do anything except sit here and listen to him. So we're going to have to go through a couple more sequences of this. You're from London, ain't you? We come from London a couple of years ago in 41. Doctor said we had to. Air was bad for me and me dad. Breathing problems or something. Hey, let's keep moving, shall we? And actually, we can't move yet. But we have to pick up this newspaper and look at it first and listen to him talk some more. I can see the others too. So maybe I can help you. I think the others are hoping you'll be able to help them. One of them knows you. Your brother, ain't it? He's the new one. Only just arrived. He feels a bit confused. I was like that at first, but you get used to it. I'm Tim, by the way. Timothy Pike. I normally play here, or on the footbridge. I like to watch the trains. But there ain't no trains. Not now. But listen, don't tell me Dad that I'm in here. It'd kill me, if you know what I mean. Anyway, let's get you out of this tunnel. You'll catch your death. Okay. Beyond what Timothy Pike here has been telling us, um, this newspaper we just picked up gives us some important pieces of information. You notice the newspaper is dated May 16th from 1947. And Timothy Pike said he came here a few years ago in 1941. Well, the game actually takes place in 2002, which is when it was written. Um, so this, these events were about 55 years ago. The main thing here is that six people vanished from the hotel in one night, including the owner, George Crabtree, who is missing. And no one knows quite what happened to them. So this is the first sign of the actual mystery here. See? We're near the station now. It won't always like this. It's bright and busy and full of people. I think they must have shut it down. I don't remember why. I don't remember much at all. Not even the way home. But perhaps you can help me with that. Alright, we can go forward again. I'll climb up on the platform. To you right now. Go on. Yeah, all this guy needs to be doing is asking, would you kindly, in front of everything. Uh, this thing in front of us is the hotel that we're going to be spending most of the game exploring. We're actually outside. You can't see any stars, but we are out in the open right now. And again, why couldn't the taxi have dropped me off around here? Why am I in that tunnel? Oh well, we're going to have to do a few things before Timothy here will shut up. So let's go ahead and finish what we need to do. That's it. That's where you can get started. Open the door. Would you kindly? There's a switch in front of you. Pull it. It's time this place had a bit more light, don't you think? It's time. When you've finished in here, I'll be outside. All right, we just turned the lights on. Actually, what Timothy here is functioning as is kind of the tutorial at this point. He's walking us through the start of the game, but... I can still help you if you get stuck. You can find me on the wooden footbridge. I play there a lot. It's sort of, well, safe. Because it's secret, you see. It don't know I'm here, talking to you. But it will soon, so I'd better go. Remember? I'll be on the footbridge. I'll leave you a note. Off now. And finally he's gone. And look at this door relative to that door. Is that supposed to be a much smaller door? You know, not a full size door, or is this Alright. We're outside here and we don't really this is next to the toilets. There's the men's room. The women's room is off to our left. We don't really need to look at those, but there's kind of a hint of something coming up in here, so I'm going to come look in here. Um, yeah, it's kind of a rundown thing. Um, it's been abandoned for 55 years, what do you expect? Now, the thing, only thing that I wanted to point out in here is if you notice over here on the right, there's a symbol on the wall, okay, and there's something written under it. Now you would think I could just turn to the right and look at that. You'd be wrong. It's now completely out of sight to my left and all I can see is the question, will I always be here? Well, probably. So 
The only way to actually see this whole si whole symbol and whatever's written below it is to go into this toilet and peek through this uh, somewhat disturbingly placed hole in the wall. Yeah. There's a symbol and the word Larsus under it. Now, we could have actually found that little bit of information someplace else. This was not completely needed, but this act of peeking through a hole and seeing something and seeing a symbol with a word corresponding to it is kind of hinting at what we're going to be doing for the rest of the game. So I'm going to go ahead and back out of here now that I've pointed that out. Just remember that that symbol and the word Larsus was there. Now one of the things about this game is that it doesn't give you notes or copy this stuff down or remember anything for you. 2002, 2003, it was assumed you would write all that stuff down on a piece of paper or something. So we're going to have to remember all of that. Okay, we came here because our brother asked us to help him. I guess the first thing we need to do is see if we can figure out what our brother wanted. Now he's in this, he had been in this waiting room. And we can't get in touch with him, and probably because his cell phone is broken. Yes, that was state-of-the-art cell phone for 2002, but it's broken anyway. Most of what we need is over here on this desk. Now, some more background. I wonder if that coffee is cold right now. Probably. Okay. Your brother, Pete Crowhurst, was an architect. Now, this hotel, which you may kind of recognize as the one we just looked at from the outside, this hotel has been abandoned for 55 years. And um, your brother has been hired by the person who now owns this place to try to basically bring the hotel back to its former glory. We're going to make a new boutique hotel here. There's going to be a club, a nightclub attached to it, that sort of thing. And he's here surveying the place, trying to figure out what's going on. Now, and he has a PDA here because, again, this was pre-iPhone, so this was state-of-the-art in, um, in 2002. He has a group of messages here. Um, he basically said he got here on April 17th and couldn't see much about the building. He's staying with the crab trees, is all we know. Um, he's amazed at how intact it is. It's like everything has been abandoned in place. The hotel still has all the fixtures and everything from 1947. Um, he finds out that there's two students here, Polly and Nigel. They are ghost hunters. They are at, from Weymouth University, and they're working on their degree in alternative sciences which I'm sure is an absolutely real degree and not one that was made up. Okay, he does a survey, and he hears what he thinks was a kid up in the tunnel. Hmm, I wonder if his name was Timothy Pike. Anyway, he's going through the notes. He says everything's still very much intact. He hears the kid again. Uh, now, he takes this piece of survey equipment, and he's out surveying, and he finds out when he set the equipment to the coordinates 271 by 632 the video display unit went crazy some kind of interference but he also says when he did this the word cars popped into his head okay and he decides that would make a good name for the um, club the nightclub they're gonna put here but cars and he doesn't know why that came into his head but it did he had some pizza and beer with Polly and Nigel, how they talk about they have um, cameras all over the place, and that sort of thing. He also makes a weird comment, I think I've already passed it, about Polly and Nigel having a generator, as they have power. Um, I don't know why he never just went in over there next to the bathrooms where we were and turned the power switch on there. But, hey, whatever. Uh, somebody's messing with his stuff. Polly and Nigel claims it wasn't them. He decides it must be the kid. But he's sure that he heard someone walking up another platform whistling. Then, on the night of the 29th, which, if you looked at the watch in that opening cinematic, was the night that um, he called you in a panic, he heard somebody whistling, walking up and down outside, and 
Polly and Nigel weren't there. He tried to get in touch with them and he couldn't. And maybe a friend. No, I know who to call. Perfect. They always love the puzzle. That would be, of course, you. The standard, ageless, faceless, gender-neutral, culturally ambiguous adventure person. Now, Afghan Cap is too hard to say, so I think I'll just refer to the person we're playing here as nameless protagonist. Alright. He has some email about the blueprints. The, his Doctor Who magazine subscription is about to expire. And the email from you, who apparently go by the name Mumra, um, thinks something is going on, but yeah, you're concerned, and you came down. Nameless protagonist came to see what their brother is up to. All right. That's all we can really get out of all of this, but this just kind of gives us a setup. Your brother, Pete Crowhurst, and the two ghost hunters, Polly and Nigel, have disappeared and we need to find out what happened to them. Now we're going to start, there's this little ticket dispenser here. If I turn that, I pick up some coins. I'm going to need those in a minute. I'm not going up there yet, we're going to go into this office. Now, this game was written by someone named Jonathan Bokes. Uh, one of the things about Bokes' adventures, beyond the fact that he does a lot of horror adventures, is that he puts a lot of details in his games. You can look at all kinds of things and they give you all kinds of color and ideas of what are going on. You know, you can I mean, look at the tickets and that sort of thing. Now, a lot of these things have very little to do with the adventure you're actually playing. They just have to do with the um, color and flavor text and that sort of thing. And so it adds a lot more depth to the game. Um, I'm going to be skipping over a lot of those because, again, they aren't really necessary for what we're trying to do here. But if, you know, if you are playing, take the time and look at them. I mean, he spent a lot of time putting them here, and I'm sure a lot of them are very realistic. Or, not necessarily realistic, I'm sure they're actual, what it would have looked like if you were there. Now, the one thing you hear here, or can find here, is that... This is a note from when the station was closed, and there was a big newspaper scandal. It's like they talk about all those people who disappeared. The six people we talked about earlier who disappeared from the hotel, the child who disappeared. Um, that's obviously the person we've been talking to. There's a note over here where he talks about how this station was shut down because of what happened Satisfaction never recovered after the events that happened in the station hotel, which turns out to be the, um, you know, the people who disappeared from the hotel, those six people. Uh, we can look at these notes. He talks about um, vandalism ongoing. He talks about Timothy Pike who disappeared. Well, we know what happened to Timothy Pike. We've run into him. They seem to be going through you know, a lot of candles. Um, not all of these things are necessarily important. You know, four pounds of candles. It's just, again, more flavor text and that sort of thing. The one thing we needed from in here was this lantern, which you saw I just picked up. And this thing lights up and it doesn't seem to do anything. But there's a couple of those false hits the game. Um, we can go down here and look at some more stuff. And it's not really important. GWR is the Great Western Railway, in case you're wondering why you see that all over the place. And over here we have some telephones. Now this is where we get our first little haunting from the game. I pick up the phone and then I, when there's something I can interact with on the screen, clicking on the menu item uses it. So clicking here will put a coin in the phone. And we'll hear some mysterious sounds. And then we'll have a slight conversation with someone who may be dead. Hello? Is someone there? Oh, you are there. My name is Nigel. Nigel Dampers. Me and my colleague Polly, we were working in the hotel. We'll find out more about that later. But listen to me for now, because I haven't got much time. 
It probably knows I'm talking to you, so I'll have to be quick. You have to get into our room. We're doing some work, some work in the hotel. You'll find out what later. For now, all you need to know is you need to find the key. You should find it. I have great faith in you. The key, I left it in a, in a teapot. Yes, in a teapot. I can't remember where. Silver teapot. I'm sure you'll find it. I must go now, it's here. I've got to go. And that sound will continue for a while. I'll go ahead and hang up. Now, what you may have noticed is that both Nigel just now and Timothy, who was talking to us earlier, talked about it. And they never said really what it was. But um, obviously something has them. Both of them have disappeared from this hotel. And there's obviously something here. Now, if you remember earlier... We talked. I said something about how Timothy was a hint system. This is the note Timothy said he would leave you. Um, basically, if you get stuck in the game, if you go to the room that where you were stuck, where the puzzle is, you can't solve, and then come here, he'll give you a hint. Now, we don't really need that, but that's just something to know. Again, it's obviously night. This is just looking out of the hotel. So you see there's this area over here, which is where the the lobby we were just in is a bit off to the right. This is the entry to the hotel. The kitchen and all will be over there, and these are the three floors of the hotel. And that must be the piece of survey equipment our brother was using. So let's go over here and look at that. And again, why did the cab not drop us off out here? Why did it take us down? Why were we in that tunnel? Why were we asleep over there? All right. Now, our brother said that his note said that something happened when the, this was pointed to 271 by 632. Now, that's not too hard, except that this game was obviously not intending to run on a modern quad-core processor, because if I tap the buttons here, this thing flies all over the place. It's actually hard to get it to narrow down on 632. But... Okay, 628 is close enough, obviously. Now, notice that this symbol is fading in and out of view here. It looks like a triangle with a hook or something coming out of it. Go ahead and we'll turn that off and back out. Um, and the word cars came to mind when he saw that. Now, remember, we saw in the men's room, we looked through the little glory hole in there, that there was a... Um, symbol on the wall and the word Larsis. So it appears that we need to be looking for symbols and words to go with them. There seems to be a lot of that going in the game. All right. Now, um, our, our, our brother Pete Krause said he had stayed with the um, crab trees and was walking through the, jump, through the woods to get here. And there's an old barn out here in the woods. So let's go over here and check out this barn. Did you just hear a car trying to start? Hmm. Uh -huh. Oh look, there's a car in here. Now you notice that little wrench shaped icon I've got right now? That means I can use one of my inventory items here. The inventory item I can use is the lantern and now I have a lantern light moving around. Yeah, that's an old roadster, probably from 1947. What do you think? Yeah. Too bad I can't do anything with a car. Man, that thing's probably worth something. It's been sitting here all these years. What we actually have to do, notice I have a forward arrow again. I go past the car, turn to the right, and then look down on the floor. Where there is a trap door. And being good adventure people, we're going to go look down and see what's under the trap door. And this sure is creepy down here. Yeah, little kids singing in the dark. That's never not creepy. And strange columns and symbols. I can 
it's not obvious I can put the, um, if I click here, it puts the lantern on that and the whole room lights up. Okay, notice we have a stone block with a thing on it, some sort of creature. This block has a lot of symbols on it. You may have recognized that symbol right there as we saw that written on the wall in the bathroom in a couple of places when we were in that men's room. And then there's all these symbols down here. Now, if you might recognize two of them right away, that's the one that was identified as cars, or we're calling cars. And that was the one that was on the wall of the bathroom and was labeled Larsis. So there's all these symbols. And there's this row of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 holes with a line connecting them. Now I can look through each of these holes and see a single symbol, like there's that little sideways one, the second symbol is what we are calling cars, the third symbol is that little thing. I can look at each of these and see a single symbol. Now again, the game will not remember these for us. We're going to have to remember these. And there's Larsis. That was eight, I think, was Larsis. Um, I'm not going to try to put this together, but if when you're playing this, the thing you will have to do is just sketch these symbols as best you can in the order I just showed them, and then remember the words that go with them. Okay? This is actually a very key piece of information. Now, the real question is, who put this down here and why? How long is this rock, these two stones, or this one stone and this one carving, I guess that's a pool of water it's reflecting in down there, how long have they been down here? Who put this here? Yeah, like I said, there, there's no way that... Why are little kids singing in the dark so green? Alright. Well, I'm glad we're out of there. All right, while we're here in this old barn, there's one more thing we need to do. We need to go up this ladder, and up here there's a little bit of a storage space. There's some old plates, and there's this wooden box that has a screwdriver in it. Now, that's the only tool we found so far, so we better take it. It might be useful. Back out of that. Go back down. It's a nice car. I wish you could take the car and leave. And go back through these woods. Yes, because there's nothing creepy about the woods here, is there? There's the way out. There we go. And go back to the hotel. Whew. Now, I could go up and through that door, but it, things would kind of get confusing if I do that. Now, there's a couple of different ways we can do things here. And I'm going to take a shortcut and just hop across the tracks here. There's a couple of things we could do here, um, but I found that if you go into, go through things the way they seem to be laid out in the game, you actually go in the wrong direction. It actually sends you backwards. This is the room we were just in. So I'm going to go forward again. This is the door that was in that waiting room where your brother had set up his camp. And so we're going to go down to here, which is the actual entry to the hotel. This is the buffet of the hotel, and somebody's left a lantern going in here. Um, again, you can look at a lot of things just for color and flavor if you like. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to take us through the hotel in the order that we actually can use the things in the order we find them. Otherwise, we're going to go into a room not have what we need to solve the puzzle into the room and have to go to the other end of the hotel anyway. So I'm going to kind of run us through this backwards because it actually in the long term makes the most sense. Over here we have a lantern and some candles. Remember they were complaining about that in the um, hotel or in the um, in the plate in the um, office of the train station. They were talking about candles being used. Now over here 
is our first piece of equipment. This is an electromagnetic detector. It's a piece of ghost hunting equipment. Now I'm going to click this and it forms this line down here. Basically if there's any electromagnetic anomalies in our area this line will start flickering. And I can bring it back if I want but all we really need is that line. So this is going to help us detect when there are ghosts around. Because this is a ghost hunting adventure. Huh. I wonder who's calling us. Maybe we should go answer the phone. I don't think that's for us. Right. Okay. Uh, we need some... Okay. Now remember what your brother said about how this place looks completely undisturbed since the 1940s? It is. I mean, look at it. I mean, the calendar hasn't been updated since... Okay, why does April only have 29 days? April only has 29 days in it. And it's not that this was them filling it in because you notice the days that aren't part of the month are not colors. April only had 29 days in 1947. Who knew? All right. Um, things we can find in here. There's a book here telling us about floods. Obviously, floods are a danger. Now, there is a piece of paper here telling you that Yes, your flood, your hotel is quite safe from floods, but there's a barn behind here that isn't. You may may wish to encourage your guests to not park their motor cars in the garage. So it basically talks about that, and they seem to be a little interested in the car in the garage for some reason. There's also this thing. For flour, but underneath that ad for flour, there is this. Fortis Valdis. Please keep this code in a safe place. Now notice there's kind of a cross-shaped thing with numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Hmm. Okay. And there's some other things we can look at in there, but they're not really that important. Picture on the wall. And the thing we actually need to look at next is right there. It's a safe but we can't look at it from that angle. We can look at these switches, but they don't do us any good right now. And what was that noise? All right, fine. We have to come out to here to look at the safe. Now, remember, we just saw a cross-shaped thing where we had to hit things in a particular order. Remember that order? One, two, three, all the way at the bottom, four, and up here is five. Now it didn't tell us anything to let us know that it worked, but it does. Now down here we can pick up that thing, which is a key to the bar. And we can't really pick up anything else in here, but we're going to need that bar key at some point. Now the papers over here have use if we are trying to do a solve a puzzle, for example. Our for backstory, they have nothing to do with the puzzle so much. For example, here we talked to Miss Grable that someone has written to Miss Grable named MF saying that we need to meet at evening for dinner because don't be late, it will cost you. Hmm. Looks like something was going on between MF and Miss Grable. When E is having her. Not sure about this when best not to keep her waiting. So, hmm, they're a little concerned about Miss Grable. Um, George, who we know has disappeared, tells Edith, whoever that is, that he will not be in the bar right away. He has something to deal with. Tell Vernie I hope to join him for drinks after midnight. I may have a lot to confess. I hope I have the chance to explain. Do not come looking for me, for you will not find me. And we know that George Crabtree was someone who disappeared. We don't know what happened to him. Miss Fly. Hmm, I wonder if that's the MF we saw earlier. Demands orange juice. She's a right one. This strawberry is looking off. Give her that. Well, they weren't very happy with Miss Fly for some reason. Um, now, to E is someone named Andrew Varney. I mentioned to Andrew that we may have to a bit of knockoff bacon. And 
No to all, I feel like someone is breaking into the hotel. Nothing is stolen, but I heard someone on the second flight of stairs. I ain't blaming Ghost either. Okay, a lot of what this did was tell us who was staying in which room. And Miss Fly and Miss Grable have some sort of business going on. George is going off to do something, and he is telling Mr. Varney that it may be, you know, he may be going for a while. Now let's look over here, and there's this blotter. Now I notice that there's some something to do with room 3A, they need to order more gin, caution RG, ES40W, we don't know what any of this stuff means, and there's these weird blotter things, blotch things. Now I can take a piece of paper and drag it over this blotter. Now, you ever see the old standby and old detective movies where they use a pencil and rub it over a piece of paper and they see what was the last thing written on that um, pad was, even though it's not there? Well, we can do that with this pen here. And apparently somebody had been writing a lot of numbers and lines and that sort of thing. Now we can move this around. Now notice that... Hmm, some of these lines, I wonder if any of them line up with this. Well, turns out they do. Paper costs money, Betty, so don't waste it. Stop doodling and drawing on it. Uh, the voice you just heard was Edith. She, Edith Pinfold, I believe her name is. She's the owner of the hotel, or the proprietress of the hotel. Betty is her daughter. Now, notice there are these blotches line up exactly with these numbers. And the numbers are 1, 2, 3 on the big blotches, then 4, 5, 6, 7 on the small blotches. Now this again is going to come in handy later. We know we got this in the right spot because it triggered that voice. Um, again, the game is not going to remember this far as we're just going to have to remember 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Now, we turn to the right here. Remember that, again, this is a little annoying on this game. There was a, we could see this letter to the left of the blotter, but we couldn't see it until we got here. It's, this is, um, Edith is looking for Betty. Where are you? I've looked all over for you. So she's missing. Breakfast details are in the pigeonholes. We just looked at those. George didn't come down, did he? Didn't see him all night. Again, George is one of the people who disappeared. So obviously this letter was written the day after everyone disappeared. It's very quiet now. Either everyone has gone to bed or left completely. Strange. Yes, this was obviously written right after all those disappearances we've heard about. All right. Now there's more stuff we can go down here. There's that bar we got the key to. But... I have found the best way to do this game is to actually go up all the way to the attic first and then come down. So we're going to start by climbing up these steps. And I don't know what that little noise was. So we're now up on the first floor. Let's go on up to the second floor. And... Look at our electromagnetic detector. Something spooky is going on. Yeah. There's no way this is not supposed to be creepy. No, I don't think we're alone in here. There's something here. Okay, you know what? We've been going for about 40, 45 minutes now. I think this is a good place as any to stop with our first haunting. And so, yeah, thank you. So I'm going to call this to a stop right now. We've explored the first floor. We're getting ready to head on up to the attic in a minute. Uh, yes, thank you. And so I'm going to call a stop to the game here. We're going to go on up to the top floor. And when we come back, we will start exploring the mysteries of the Station Hotel in Darkfall.
My name is Dennis. I am Tan Staffel the Paleo Gamer, and I will see you next time. <laughs>